are about our lives in the here and now. And they are about how every action we do are, is important. Let's start with the first one. So just to give you a reminder, um, the reason why we study about this right view is something I, I just like to put a, uh, take one step back and, and, and just reflect on why we are learning about this. So just like in psychology, there is the concept of moral reasoning that helps us and motivates us to do good. In, in Buddhism, we, we believe that certain views of life help us and make us more inspired to do good and also give us a certain conscience in avoiding what is wrong. So in Thai language, there is a, uh, there is a term which, uh, there is a, um, an idiom which we use, which is Rakbun Kloa Bab. And Rakbun Kloa Bab means to love merit or to love to do good. And Kloa Bab means that you are afraid or that you are uh, um, uh, shameful of doing wrong. And that is actually something that is two sides of the same concept. So when we are aware that all our actions matter, we are also more careful to do something which would violate our principles. And at the same time, we also become more motivated to do as much good as we can. So today I've just uh, had come back from a uh, uh, chanting, uh, sorry, uh, an alms offering. We did an alms offering in the city uh, of Nijmegen, which is in the east of Holland. Uh, we, we had an alms offering ceremony, which means that uh, we invited several temples, including a Sri Lankan temple, to come and uh, receive offerings from the lay people. And some of these offerings we are going to use to, uh, to also give to the poor through uh, a food bank. And uh, this is uh, some, uh, for some example of generosity. When we talk about generosity, it's very important in Buddhism. The first concept of right view is saying there is giving. That's what the text says. There is giving. It's very short. Buddhist texts tend to be very short. They are like short notes. They're not always very uh, extensive. So the Buddha may have taught much more extensively, but the person who made the notes may, may be just short notes. So the Buddhist texts that have been left behind sometimes are very short. But it's up to uh, people like me or other teachers to explain. And I hope I do a good job. Giving, there is giving. Um, it means giving really reaps fruits. Giving really, I'm not, not sure if you say that, if you say it like that in English, but you would in Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Sure giving, give, giving really reaps fruits means that giving really helps us. It's really something good. And it really, the, the good effects of giving really exist in life. It's not just a fairy story, a fairy tale, but it really matters if you give. It will come back to you no matter what the circumstances. But this is not yet about the law of karma on itself. This is about giving in general. Okay. According to our vice, our deputy abbot in Thailand, he has done a lot of analyzes of this, uh, this concept of my view in Buddhism and the Buddhist text about it. And he says, actually, the first form of right view is very basic. Actually, many people believe in this. It simply says that giving makes the world go round. Giving is really important. If you have a relationship with somebody, like a, a long-term relationship, a marriage, then you need to have giving. You need to help each other out. If you just take care of your own stuff and the other person take care of their own stuff and you never share anything, you can't build a relationship on that. In the same way with parenthood, 
just the other day, a few days ago, my brother had, have had, has had a son, uh, which is the first time in my life that I'm an uncle. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, if, we, if as soon as we are, um, um, you are living in a family, you need to have generosity. If you don't have generosity, you cannot take good care of yourself, of each other. And the family will very quickly break up. So giving what the Buddha says here is basically that the most basic form of goodness you can find everywhere in your family life, uh, in your work life. If in work you do not share, you only compete with others, you never share any knowledge, not even with your colleagues, let alone your competitors or your, what do you call it, your, the people you compete with, then eventually then the whole market will Will, will be a mess. <clears throat> that may not sound economically sound, but it's the way we think about it in Buddhism. If we don't give and only accumulate things, be stingy, compete with each other, abuse each other, there will never be enough in the world. This is literally from Lopatata. So he's, he basically says giving, that is the first human quality, very first and foremost, which we cannot live without. And I think most people believe in it, especially if you are the sort of person coming to a meditation center. It's very hard to find somebody who disagrees with this. So let's go on to the next one. Please note that I'm not talking about merit yet. That is a, a, a later, okay? The next one is a bit, bit more complex. There is sacrifice. Sacrifice in Buddhism has a very specific meaning. Before Buddhism, there was uh, the ancient Hindu religion, which at that time was called Brahmanism. And unlike Hinduism in the present day, Hinduism in those days emphasized a lot of animal sacrifice, which is still, for example, the case in Nepal. And uh, there was a lot of animals that were sacrificed for certain ritual offerings. And the Buddha, he said, the best sacrifice is not to, offer, to sacrifice animals or even human beings, but the best sacrifice is when uh, the, the rich in society start to take care of the poor. This is an example. Okay, it, it may sound very communist. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think it's exactly meant like that, but, but it, uh, it, it shows that the importance the Buddha gave of uh, give, helping each other out in society. There is sacrifice here. Doesn't mean only giving to the poor or giving to those in need. It actually means any form of helping people out that are in need. And the idea behind this is that if we don't help people out that are in need, then the problems are going eventually to face us as well. So the example that Lombardata usually gives is the example of, a, of somebody who sells drugs. And the person who sells drugs, if somebody asks, why are you selling drugs in our neighborhood? You're, you're, you're ruining all our children, the future of our children, the future of the people in this neighborhood. Then he will say, that's not, that's not my business. My only business is to sell drugs. That is, your problems is your business. So as soon as we start to divide the world in my business and your business, and that's not my problem, that's your problem, then we don't, cannot help each other out. So in, uh, in uh, Holland, there used to be a lot of problems with uh, what we call travelers. Do you know travelers? Tourists? Travelers. Yeah. Tourists. Huh? Tourists. Like tourists. Prison. No, no, no. Uh, I don't think you have this in America, but it could be that you have a similar phenomenon. About a hundred years ago in Europe. Yes. Yeah. Like people who hop in people's cars. No. Hitchhikers? No, this is, this is actually a, a form of ethnicity, a form of a really a distinct group in that society. Gypsy. 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 We call them gypsy. Yes. yes. Many people in Ireland also think they are gypsies and they often live together with gypsies, but they are yeah. not gypsies. Oh. They, these yeah. are Dutch people. There used to be a, the problem which we now facing with uh, um, artificial intelligence taking over jobs of people, this already happened a long time ago. 
when there was industrialization in the West, especially in Europe. Uh, there was a lot of the industrialization happened very quickly and a lot of people lost their jobs. For example, miners or other uh, people who worked in certain fields and they lost their jobs in many big groups and then they became travelers. They started to travel from one city to another, hop from one city to the other, to use your word. And then when they hopped from one city to the other, they, they started to live isolated from the rest of the population. And for many years, Dutch society has tried to, uh, to suppress these people by trying to integrate them and forcing them to leave behind their uh, nomadic lifestyle. These people, they, they have diff diff slightly different language than Dutch language. They have slightly different customs, which are mixed with gypsy customs. And we have, when you are raised in Dutch society, you think kind of poorly about these people. But very recently, they were in the news because they were able to ask the UNESCO to protect their culture successfully. UNESCO uh, kind of passed over the heads of the Dutch government <laughs> and forced the Dutch government to start protecting the culture of the travelers. So instead of, so a lot of Dutch uh, municipalities, Dutch local governments now have to <laughs> change their policies to allow travelers to live their nomadic lifestyle, to pay taxes in, in, in another way or some other way, but to, to, to ad allow them to adapt in a way that they can be themselves. When we start to think of somebody else's problem as their problem and we do not see it as our own problem, then we start to build groups in society. And eventually these groups will cause, this separation will cause problems to become bigger and bigger. In Europe, this happened not only with gypsies and travelers, but in the recent times, it's also happening with Muslims. And uh, because in Europe, we have a lot more Muslims than America. And many of these people we have, because people don't know the history, we have actually brought them in ourselves. They have not fled from their country in Holland or in Europe, but we have brought them in ourselves. And eventually, um, sometimes there were problems with different culture, different traditions and sometimes also poverty. When people start to blame them and they, they try to fix the problem, then the problems eventually come back. And like to stay, to come back to the example of Lomporata, uh, he would say that the drug, the person who's selling the drugs, he only thinks about himself. But some people who want to change it, they will also own, sometimes only think about themselves. And sometimes other people just blame the government and say it's all a, a problem of the government. Eventually, when we not, not start to use the word our problem, then we cannot really help each other. That's the idea of there is sacrifice. There is sacrifice means that we believe it's good to help those in need because eventually the problems might come to us as well. We need to, need to help each other out in society for the reason of compassion, but also for the fact that we are wise enough to know that we are all connected. So, Lompi, would yes. this be 